you collect? Yeah, what I want to do is Liana's favorite thing where we create a module. So instead of putting that directly in the view controller, we just abstract out that behavior into something we'll probably call Firebase Storage Service or Fire Storage Service. I'm going to call it Firebase Storage Service. The pod itself is Firebase slash storage. So Firebase Storage Service. And now what? Just so I know that this stuff all relates to using storage in Firebase. Let's see, if my pods are working correctly, then I should be able to import Firebase storage. Boom. Great. Anyone know how this works? Me either. Class Firebase storage service. I'm going to set it up like I did before. There's going to be a, uh, yeah, we're going to have a singleton, so we'll call this the manager which is just an instance of this. And then we should probably look a little bit into Firebase Storage iOS. I should do that. Why should I do that? Yeah, so it's available for me to reference. Firebase Storage iOS lets you upload and share user. Well, it did. Now there's a video that we're not going to watch. It still lets you upload and share user-generated content, such as images and videos, which allows you to build rich media content into your apps. Your data is stored in a, fire, in a Google Cloud storage bucket. Who cares? OK, so we install the SDK. I'm going to assume that just means we get the pod. Stop with the videos. Yes. Set up a Firebase project, register your app. Great, we've done all that. Set up a configuration file, done that. Add it to your app, pod init, pod that. Great, we're used to this. Always helps to read it though. Make sure you configure the app. We have that in there from before. And now we can use Firebase, and I guess they're saying make sure it exists as well. Add your app to your Firebase project in the Firebase console. I think we have this as well. Create a default storage bucket. So from the navigation pane of the console, select storage and click get started. Thanks for this very nice guide whenever this loads. So go into my app. I'll go into storage. I will go ahead and hit get started. I will say that everyone who is logged in can read from here. This read write stuff, for now treat this like the only thing you need to know, which is that anyone, both in our collections looking at any collection and in our storage looking at any storage bucket, needs to be logged in in order to access stuff. We would like to restrict more permissions where, for example, someone can't edit the user account for a user that has not been. But for right now, that's not super important. So what this is saying is, again, you only have permission, or you're only allowed to read and write, so get and set, if whoever making that request is authorized. And that authorization stuff is all handled by Firebase. It's great. Now they want me to pick where my storage is going to be located. I guess I already did that. Go away. OK. I guess. Ah, OK. Great. So because I'm using a free account, on a different project that I've already used, I selected my location. You'll see this all the time. This is physically where are they storing this stuff on servers. The cloud isn't actually a cloud. You've just moved storage from your own devices to someone else's devices. So when you're storing photos, it's stored somewhere physically. So where I said was wherever this NAM5 is. I don't know what that is. 
not super important. Create the default bucket. All right. So I'm going to upload a file from here. But my goal is to use the iOS framework in order to actually create a storage service. Cool, huh? So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this from where I've created it before, because I don't think it's super important that we go through all of it. But really, the two things I want are to be able to write to storage and to read from storage, right? I want to find things in there and I want to add things to that. And so let me just pull that in. You ready to hear something really cool? I'm going to have something called storage, which is just setting up something called storage that we got from the pod. No way. And that has a function that is probably just a singleton that you initialize at that point. Creates an instance of FIR storage configured with the default FIR app. The default FIR app is the thing that you added in the, in the app delegate did finish launching with options. So if your app is set up for Firebase, you can use this and trust that it is looking at the same place that everything else is in here because all that stuff comes from the configuration file in the Google services info thing. No matter what service you use on Firebase, if it is linked to what you have in the console, it can be automatically connected to when you do that Firebase app.configure. It's all kind of like magic. Hmm? Magic's great. So what we're going to do here is then we're going to have a reference. So we're going to look at storage and we're going to call storage reference. And let's see what that is. Storage reference equal this storage object dot oh yeah, storage dot reference. Creates a FIR storage reference, initialized at the root, Firebase storage location. All right, just some stuff that exists. And then all I want to do is, oh, you be quiet. All right, let's put this in the init function. Init, have our storage is equal to storage object storage will have var storage reference is going to be of a reference object and then we're also going to have another storage reference and this is going to be specifically for the images because in our console wherever the storage is I can create folders in there and in the same way that in the database, I can look through and search for collections or files or folders using the literal string. If I have an images folder in here, I add that folder. I can look at my storage reference. And this will be my images reference, which is also a storage reference. that, get rid of that, and then I'm going to say images reference equal to storage reference dot child, and then I need to here figure out what I'm going to call that thing. Storage reference for, let's see if this works, images. Hmm. Isn't that nice, just like with Firestore? It's a shame that it won't let me do that, though. Did you mean to use a value of this type? No, I want to use the folder. So, 
Let's go have a look see again. Child, get that uh, list. That's a shame. It's probably because I'm using literally the wrong thing. Sorry about that. I'm going to want to be using this guy. And then I want to be using child to actually set up the path, which is the images. I was using a static function, a static function before. This is on the instance storage reference. Sorry about that. Cool. So this is the actual place where those images exist, whatever that kind of reference is. And then this is that subfolder. I want to save things to that subfolder. Here's how we're going to save things to that subfolder. So I am actually not sure it's a good question. With our collections, you don't have to. But with these folders, try it out. Or we can try it after we get something saving. But great question. With our folders in storage, can we just create folders by referencing them from the client, like we do with collections, where they get created when we reference them from the client? Or no? That is an open question. Let's get this working first. Ready? All right. So I'm going to have a static function. Nope. I'm going to have a regular function that I'll call on my manager called store image. And it's going to take in an image, which you think is probably some data. Interesting. Let's try it as data. And then job ID. I don't care about that right now. I'm going to store an image. Then maybe we'll have a completion handler later, but I want to see the magic of just adding this image. Make myself happy. How do you feel about that? Okay. So, what I want to do now is, I'm going to have to say some stuff about this image. I'm going to set something called metadata. I'm going to say that is just something nice that's built in metadata. A class which represents the metadata of an object in Firebase Storage. This metadata is returned on successful operations and can be used to retrieve, download URLs, blah, blah, blah. Full documentation can be found in the resource docs of whatever GCS object is. It's a good question. What is that? Has anyone heard the term metadata before? Yeah, you've seen it in some JSON. So usually when there is a write to a server or a read from the server, they can store additional information outside of like outside of the actual transmitted information you have. So for example, when you've made requests in Postman and using our network helper, part of the metadata that you threw in there was that you wanted the response to be in a JSON format. That's a piece of metadata. So here, the most, most basic piece of metadata that we will set for like saving an image is going to be that it's going to be an image and not a piece of JSON. So we can tell it what it's saving when it goes to save it. Let me create an instance of this. So the nice thing is this storage metadata has a built-in thing called content type just like we've seen before with JSON. I'm going to say that it is, I don't know, have an image, but in lowercase, that JPEG, so that when I go and I upload this, it's going to know exactly what to do with the file I'm sending, because it otherwise can't read it properly. It doesn't know what to do. Ready? All right. So now, when I go and I say manager.storeImage, I'm going to look at my manager. Nope, I don't have that. Interesting. I don't even have to do that. I can just look at my images reference. Look at that reference. 
and then I can put data. Asynchronously upload data to the currently specified storage reference. This is not recommended for large files, and one should instead upload a file from disk. Yeah, we're going to go with just saving it regardless of the size. Who cares what they say? So our data is going to be image. Our metadata is going to be metadata. This can probably be a let. Actually, all of these could probably be lets. All right, so that's what we're going to try to do. I hope it works. Let's look at that name of this function again. Put data. Ah, this is great. There's one with a completion handler. Maybe let's use that instead. So we can see what happens after we complete it. Metadata. And then our completion is response metadata and error. In if error not equal nil, let's just print it for now. Else print response metadata. Of course, we could refactor this into a result. That would be great. We could use this in such a way that it'll chain into our oh, it'll chain in our view controller. Right now I just want to press a button with an image there and see it saved in my storage. I will build out the rest of this Firebase storage service on this repo so you can look at it, but I don't think it's super important right now that it works fully and beautifully. So I'm saying specifically that it should expect it as a JPEG. I could make it a PNG so long as the image that I'm turning into data has been encoded as a PNG image. Uh, I could. I could, depending, like, I'd probably make a store movie or I could abstract this out and call it store media, and then you pick the media type for maybe an enum, and that would set the content type for when you're saving it. There are a ton of ways to do it. I just want to save the picture right now. All right. So let's see how we can make this work. Go into that profile setup view controller. When add image is pressed, it goes and it looks for permission. And then it presents a picker view controller. And then there's, of course, my wonderful picker delegate. So when an image was picked, I'm going to go and get that image and handle it. Oh no, if I couldn't get that image, I'll have to handle it in some way. When I set the image, or when I have the image, right now what I'm doing is I set it to this variable called image. Image goes and up, updates the image view to actually show it, just so that the controller is triggering a change there. And lastly, here's where I'm going to want to do that function. So mark to do, and then we'll get rid of this to do, save image in storage. So I've got a Firebase storage service. It's got a singleton on it, and I'm going to call a function on that singleton. Firebase storage service dot manager dot easy store image just needs data. How do I turn my image into data? What? Hmm. I can turn it into a PNG. Do you guys want to just save it as PNG right now? Is 
0 0.7. All right. So if we're doing this like everything else we usually do. We have a completion handler here. But oh well. Right here. Oh. Cool. Let's change it back. Thank you. All right. Again, the proper implementation, the one you will see in just a bit, is, hey, there's a completion handler. Let me know if this worked or not. But for right now, I just want to print out whether it works or not. So let's run this guy. Go to the screen, and my button's not working. That's not good. All right. Oh, my button. Where are you, my button? You're not working at all. Why not? Add it as a sub view. Create a view with a frame. Hmm. Thank you. I'll do them both. That's probably a bad idea. Let's <laughs> just be honest. Press my button. Cool. I remove that breakpoint. I continue. It'll crash. Very good. Why did you crash? Oh man. It is attempt to access something that it doesn't have access to. I gotta add it to my view list. Look at all the wonderful things that crash reports tell us about. Add a row, privacy. Here I'm looking for the photo library. This app uses and stores online your images that you add to it. Please allow. All right, let's run that guy. Hmm? That's okay. <laughs> it's really great because they include in the terms of service that they're going to save every image you add, but they don't tell you when you're actually using it. So I would like to access my photos. Please allow. Okay. Now it's going to crash for another reason. UI API called in a background thread. Interesting. Oh, yeah. All right, I do something here. Present the photo picker. This is on a background thread somewhere. I probably dispatched it incorrectly. So let's just make sure that I'm using the main thread. Doing that asynchronously. I throw that all in there. This purple is amazing. Good night, Tia. Good night, Tia. Not org. Nope, not org. Uh, hit my add button. Cool. Thank you. 
Uh, I will add this photo. And now I want to see a printout. Come in. There's a demon. Error return from demon. Well, that's not helpful. Let's try and add it again. My metadata. Oh, it worked. Whoa, an asynchronous request. It goes at a different pace than I might expect. It'll probably take a while because it's going and it's actually saving an image. I created an image called images. That wasn't great. And there's my photo. It's upside down. <laughs> Ah, okay, so here's what I probably need to do. So I probably want to add another child here. And then in there, I want to say literally anything. Uh, well, so here's a file that's actually just saved as images that's not in the images folder. And what I want to do is like chain them like I would in terminal. So I'm going to say on this images folder, add another child, and we're going to call that. Let's do this. Let UUID equal UUID. Come on, dude. There you are. Thank you. And I'll just say here, give me some unique ID. Dot. I just want the description of it. Hopefully that just creates something random. It saves it as a random thing. I know, very helpful. Yay, app. In. I never saved it, so it'll bring me to this screen. I go ahead and I hit image, add image. Okay, there's an asynchronous request. Hopefully it gives me, there we go. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? What's that? What am I missing? I could use an activity indicator. I should probably use an activity indicator. But let's also look at my images folder here. So there's that guy. Let's get its actual URL and take a look. Firebasestorage.googleapis.com slash bo slash b. Uh, let's actually open this. The color is off. That is true. Maybe the compression quality wasn't good enough at 0.7. That's also a great point. This is purple and this is pink. That works, right? It's actually like a really high quality image for just something saved on the simulator. Okay, so this is the whole URL. That's the whole URL. And I'm gonna spare you this because you'll be able to just use it. But if we look at the metadata, there's definitely a way that I could use all of the information in here to construct that URL. Because I'm going to need that string to then create the URL that we're going to save onto our photo URL. And let's not bother doing that right now. I will create it. You guys can look it over. But what are some questions about just using storage? So this is the service I created. And all I did in the VC is I, after picking it from that picker, the image picker, I just called this guy here. The next step will be to have a completion handler so you know if it actually worked or not. And then in that completion handler, in completion handler, 
success case, update user photo both in auth and in Firestore collection. So it'll uncompress it. Firebase, when we went into the storage bucket, it knows it's an image because we told the content type. So when you go to access your storage, it'll uncompress it. But we did lose 30% of the quality because we compressed it at less than 100% quality here. Mm -hmm. Of the original image. To make it go faster and to make a much smaller file. Like if we compressed everything at 100%, then the file that's going to be saved takes up more space in storage, basically. Like compression is just literally making it smaller so it takes more. Such a good question. Let's find out. No idea. Firebase. Let's look at the plans. I don't want to upgrade, I just want to see the plans. Firebase pricing. Firebase. Generous limits for hobbyists. For hobbyists now. This went from no code to hobbyists. Those carrots are weird. We got five gigs. Multiple buckets per project. And okay. Um yeah, so I guess buckets is like, thing of storage is like, you don't have to worry about where it goes, but it goes in a bucket. Like you don't need to know the actual implementation of that thing, but your bucket has a maximum size. You only have one. Only have one, I'm afraid. Oh no, okay, sorry. So buckets were what we were selecting when we created storage, where it was like, here's where it's gonna be saved in this region of the US. So that's saying like, we're allocating this physical space to you. This is our bucket. This GS protocol, Firebase, blah, blah, blah. We can save multiple folders in here, multiple images in here, up until that five gigabyte limit. For the bucket, like, just think of clicking into storage as your bucket, because that's like where it's physically saved. That's a bucket. Hmm. I do not know. Very good question. Um, Good. Let's see. Yeah, I think like going to. Let's see what we can read because this is a data object here. So let image data equal this. Image data, come on, which is now a data object. Let's see what properties are on it. Maybe there's a size on here and that would be really great. Hmm. Maybe not. We could definitely Google it. There's got to be a way. I'm not sure what the native Swift way of doing it is, but like, Common problem in making apps, obviously. So, uh, nothing on our level, but something the size of Facebook has tons of buckets all over so that it can distribute that responsibility and also just have more space. So, it's really more about scale than anything.
Let's add a video. All right, let's go online. What did you say there? Who said what? I demand to hear it now. Let's go online. I gotta get a What's the video. Cats. I know that's that's a thing people are into. That video. Sorry. I don't know. Let's see what we can get that we can download. It's been so long since I used the web browser that I don't remember how to save videos. Uh, BitTorrent. Okay. How do I get that onto the simulator though? Download. Free cat stock video footage download. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, all right, so you are, how do I get you? Your video, download, create a free account. Do you want to download this? There's like the maybe question mark. All right, does Safari send me a confirm when it downloads? Let's find out. We can go look in our photos. All right, relax. Oh, that's a good point. Files. Give me files. Oh, jeepers. Cat video. Got MOV. Play. Play. What a shame. I know. But I, don't, I don't know what's going on there. File seems like a great app. Um, let's try it again. Files. There we are. Oh, maybe it wasn't fully downloaded. Yeah. It's like fine, let's be real. Um, okay. Now how can I add it to photos? Can I use this share thing? If it pops up. You? There we go. Let's save video. Now let's go look. Come on. In our photos. Now let's look at all photos. Look, it's our cat. Okay. Let's actually see what happens when we try to save that as an image. Because obviously, what's not going to work perfectly is in this image picker, we're going to want to actually check that what we received from the image picker is an image. If you remember, did finish picking media info with an info key. There are a whole bunch of info keys. There's probably one, I don't know. Is not for a regular image. I hope so. We'll find out. An image, an image, MS URL. We can do a live image. Ah, that's cool. So the one that you hold and it does like video stuff, that's this type. Thanks, David. Yeah, it's weird. Okay. So let's try to add. Oh, come on, I updated it. Photos. All right. Let's rerun that app. 
going to not be in the full assessment. Fire there. Log in. Add image. All photos. Ah. Uh, why? Photo library. Let's see. Are there other libraries in my source type? Save photos album? The image picker. Does not have a camera. Hmm. Maybe an image picker is not what I'm looking for, guys. Image picker. Huh. iOS image picker, but video. I just like any video or movie that's from 2012. Let's see if it works at all. Oh, interesting. 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 We can select media types. So by default, I guess it's not giving us that stuff. Let's say image picker, view controller, got media types. It's going to be a series of strings, but it looks like if we knew how to read Objective C, this is probably going to be something to do with movies. So now we could just Google image picker, what are the video? Media types. Let's see. Media types. A man, a ray indicating the media types. Ah, something called available types. By default, the property is set to the single value K U T T type image. Designates the still camera interface while capturing media, blah, blah, blah. To designate the movie capture interface or to indicate that only movies should be displayed, use KU, blah, 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 blah. So media types, thanks, Objective-C. For us, we just want it as a string. And I will say the types we want are this and that. Shut up. Sorry? Uh, really good question. Let's see. I don't know. I feel like maybe it's saved a preference of mine. We click into Objective C. Let's log in. All right, that's just the password I have to everything. Add image. Uh oh, I did it wrong. No available types for source zero. Hmm. All right. What's that? No, I think I just picked out. There should be a set called UTT. There should be an enum for these guys. I'll find that enum. I'll put it in here. Right now, I got to run to a meeting. Love you all lots. But here's what we did we stored media that we chose from our app in our database. That database had a unique location for that image. We could set that as the profile image on our user. We could also set that as the, we could add that to the user's entry in our Firestore collection for users. And then we could go and we could get that location and display that image to other people if like they looked at our profile, for example. 
So now we have that all set up. I am going to do the actual implementation of setting up those photos as saved entries on users and maybe add some better UI. And then tomorrow, I don't know, we'll just review. Maybe we'll build more features. So tomorrow we're going to review from 10 until 12, and then you are expected at Guggenheim no later than earlier than 2 p.m. I'm going. I'll be the person at the door turning you away at 201. Please be on time. Thanks, guys.